Well, here we are. The other side has been pretty much done, and that saves us a lot of time. So here I'm going to rotate us back into a forward position. And this is, uh, you know, we're about halfway through, maybe a little bit better than halfway through. And by this time you're probably all wondering about uh, that big object in the middle of the face that seems to be missing. Well, technically we call that a nose. And uh, I've been pretty much working around that. This, this demonstration is not necessarily about how to keep things in a proper order. Uh, there probably would be a good demonstration in doing something like that. But, uh, so in other words, it, it's not necessary for you to wait until the very end to put the nose into place. But I'm just going to build up a little bit of material on both sides here. Right up to the bridge of the nose, right here. The fairly Starting off as a fairly narrow nose. Just let me give you a three-quarter view to show you how that is developing to a profile. See how that looks to me? All right. Let's go to a three-quarter view so maybe you can follow this a little bit better. So it's fairly narrow. Noses are, like every th other part of the human body, tremendously different from one person to another. And uh, so what we're doing is we're extending where the bone would have been, right here, and the rest of this is... <laughs> what is it? I'm drawing a blank. You, you know what it is. It's cartilage. Of course. Thank you very much. I knew you knew this. All right. So now we're going to put the suggestion of a nostril on either side of it. And I say the suggestion of a nostril because we are just getting started on a process of the nose that is also going to include the face on either side of the nose. So this is just not the whole business here even though it looks fairly complete. You notice this V-shape here. These nostrils are never flat, okay? So they, they will go across the face in a V-formation very much that way. Now, before I go further with the nose, what I want to do is show you a little bit about the fleshy parts in here. Now these parts that we're going to be referring to are a whole bunch of muscles that come down, radiate from the cheekbone down to this central node and all around it. This area that we're going to be dealing with uh, deals with a whole series of muscles that either work to extend or contract the face. It happens that the human face has more muscles devoted to it than any other part of the body. And it would seem as if the evolution of that has to do with expression for communication. The human language is relatively recent in the development of human beings. It's, it's guesstimated to be between 50 and 60,000 years ago, and uh, we are considerably older than that. So here, let me just pat down some of this stuff. I'm just making a few indications here of, of suggestions of muscles. But the real thing here to deal with is this, which is called the nasolabial fold. And uh, this is a matter of aging, because when we're quite young, and if our faces are not particularly fleshy, then uh, we just see the very slightest indication of that, but we're going to make that a little bit more prominent here and explain it a wee bit. There's more musculature to be put in that section. Pardon my finger blocking your view, but it's the only view that I have. I'm making this particularly prominent because I want to show you something about this feature of our face. And uh, not all of us, but many of us, especially me, I have a very distinct fold there. And that comes from having a rather fat, fleshy head. 
Now, I have shown you the beginnings of that, and what I want to show you is a very interesting thing about that. Now, as we age and as we develop that in our face, that crease can go right down and around this node. It usually goes right around like that. In a younger face, in a tauter face, um, it's less pronounced, and in point of fact, the flesh here is a little bit fleshier, and so that there is the development of this part of the cheek is that this fold down to about this point is coming from this side of the cheek, that side of the face. However, the crease that occurs on this side is coming from this side of the face. Okay, That's not uncommon at all and I can make them younger for you and uh, demonstrate that. So you see as I soften all that the face gets younger looking and here as I put more flesh in on top of the muscle because there is fat on top of muscle in the face and this will make the cheek a little bit more prominent. Haven't quite decided yet. I guess we'll decide this as we go along as to the aging of this head. We are after all doing a rather imagined face. Can you see how that's developing now? Over here on the side of the nose we have uh, an opening of the nasal passage that gives us a slight bulge behind the nostrils, right about here and here. A little bit more moisture there. That's everybody's favorite part of the face, and I, I get that at talks. Do you know what this thing is called? Well, it's called a philtrum. So my answer to that, anybody in the audience, is when they say, do you know the, the name of that? I just say, yes, I, I actually do. And I hope I know it at this point, because I'm beginning to have a lot of doubts about what I know and what I don't know. <laughs> a little bit more on the no nostril. And just as before, I'm going to take a few moments uh, not to waste your time, but just to do this side of the face. Did you notice um, before doing this part that I'd actually put these uh, indentations in the eyeballs? Sculptors call that color, and what it is really is uh, we create a shadow in there to give a sense of the pupil. I think it adds a lot of reality to the piece. But at any rate, uh, this is something that you would not do if you were um, going to paint the head. So now you can see that we have both sides filled in. There's, there's the other side. The nose has been worked on ever so slightly in these areas over here around the nostrils. And the next thing that I want you to see on camera is a little bit of clay that is added in to extend the nose. This is called the bridge of the nose. So we're going to do that on both sides. Uh, the difference between men and women in this area is very pronounced. And, and stereotypically, women have a broader and more graceful transition from the uh, upper eye to the, to the nose. And with men, it is a little bit tighter, a little bit more acute and we can get this uh, brow ridge muscle because this is muscle now on top of the bone which is also a protuberance. So we'll put those little bits in there. And now comes um, uh, a tricky part. Not, not so much for you uh, but for me and that is we're going to see if we can set the camera up in such a way that we're going to be able to illustrate what the nostrils look like because right now we just have these two planes of clay without any suggestion of being able to breathe. Well, hopefully this will give you something of a view 
first things we want to do is recognize that on either side of the nostrils, and pardon my shadow, that we have, this is slightly more extended than the rest of the nostril. We just take a moment to deal with this light. Hopefully that's a little bit better for you. This part of the nostril is in behind this right over here. So we'll do this on both sides. The nostril itself is almost an oval shape that goes up. If you were to put a direction to it, it would go up like that to both sides. See, so that's the general direction of the nostril. And uh, this is about as much as I can demonstrate. These are the things you don't see until you look for them. Most uh, people don't look up the nose of a sculpture unless, of course, the figure is reclining and you can't help but notice it. So it's best to learn these shapes. I'm going to soften this right here with the paintbrush. Paintbrush is a wonderful tool uh, for a water-based clay, which is what we're doing our demonstration with right now. So there are the nostrils. Very quick and dirty, but enough to get the point through. <laughs> 